heard several, several folks talk about some situations in the line that, uh, you know, Brother Jack, sometimes we hear some situations as a pastor and, and I, I know my heart, I know Brother Jack's heart and how we feel. Sometimes you look for a Superman word to say and you don't have it. Just know you can't say but that you love somebody and you pray for them. But I think about this, this third verse. And if I could say something to you, it'd be who knows your disappointments? Who knows each time you cry? Who understands your hardness? Who drives the tears from your eyes? Nobody better than Jesus. Amen. Do you know this one? That makes sense. Do you know? Do you man? Brother Ray, would you let that go? Do have problems. 
do is operate it over. Let's look at that here and see if we want to back As our leakage step forward, we'll get our tires and all the scope of the water. Our Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all the water you give us. Thank you, our Father, for this one team here. Our Father, who loves you. Our Father, who teach you to judge. Thank you for each one of them. Thank you for this offering, Father, for the help of our team. We did this in our psalm service today. All the Lord, the Father, the words of speaking, thank you for all the words of speaking. Thank you for all the words of speaking. Thank you for all the words of speaking.
the last few months had to if I preached it so we could get it on the CD. And I listen, I struggle that I don't want to preach it so we can get it on the CD. I don't want to preach it because folks have asked me to. But he's laid it on my heart this morning. So if you have your Bibles, I'd like for you to turn to Jeremiah chapter number 18. We're going to go down to the potter's house. Amen. And I'm hoping that he'll help us this morning. Jeremiah 18, the Bible says, The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise, and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my words. And then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the vessels. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter, so he made it again another vessel, as it seemed good to the potter to make it. And then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter, said the Lord? Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in my hand, O house of Israel. I'm glad that we're all in the hands of God. And I sure am glad, just as he said, even when the potter had the marred clay in his hands, he didn't throw it away, but he began to work on it again. I'm thankful that all Away, but I'm glad He kept working on us. Amen. Lord, help us this morning. I want to be completely in the center of Your will. I want to be obedient to what You have me preach. Lord, I've preached this message probably more than any other message. And but Lord, help me, help me retain the things I preached. But Lord, this is this is what I want to ask. Everything You want me to say, help me to say. Everything You don't want me to say, Lord, right in my mouth to where I would not utter a word. Lord, I, I, we want the focus to be on You. Lord, it's all about Jesus. And Lord, uh, as Brother Craig and I talked last night, if, if we lift You up, You'll draw me into You. Lord, speak to hearts. Encourage the broken this morning. We'll praise You, Lord, for what You do. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. It doesn't matter how many times, 50 sometimes, the priest says, it's always been to man. But in 2006, Don and I we were on vacation. I'd like to say, brother, I told that I am excited that God's going to let me preach it because I love it. And uh, we were on vacation. One time, Don wanted to start a business. And she was going to call it Basket Friend. And well, that was the name of it. Okay, that just didn't come out. But what Don wanted to do was make baskets. For, for instance, when, when, uh, when, okay, husbands and wives need to have a date night. Don said, why don't we make them a basket for date night? We'd go to the, uh, uh, we'd go to a, a Blockbuster video. We'd get a gift card to Blockbuster video. She gets some Twizzlers in there, some popcorn in there. She puts some, you know, so the couple could go home, put in a good movie, pop some popcorn, have a soft drink, eat some Twizzlers, Hershey's, you know, if I made the basket, it was filled with all kinds of junk food. And uh, so anyways, that, that was, and, and when somebody got married, if she'd find out the theme of, you know, the color of their bathroom, the kitchen or something, she'd make the basket. To, if she'd make the basket for someone that uh, was starting a job, maybe retiring, she, she wanted to do that. And so we were on vacation, she said, I'm going to go to this basket shop. I did not want to look at any more baskets. So I went down to the potter. And when I went to that potter shop, see, we just right across the road was walking on potter. Many of you may have been to walk them on potter, done all kinds of stuff. And but I went to this little potter shop and it was different. When I went in, there was a counter and there were shelves all along the wall and had some of the most beautiful potter I've ever seen. This this shop was owned by a man by the name of Noctily. He was a born again Jew. And so he began to, we began to talk, and he asked me where I was from. I said, Tennessee. He said, I can tell you were Southern by having to talk. 
The next thing he did was he began to put it on the wheel. And uh, now, I remember Sister Teresa watching a video one time when we, Doug and I were in Gatlinburg. And we were in Gatlinburg on our anniversary. There was, a, if, you, if, you, if you check out a, a hotel room in Pigeon Forge or Gatlinburg, there's usually a channel that shows a local park. I don't know if it's still on, but every time we've been on vacation down there or anniversary, we can find that channel. This guy, he's been working on the same vessel for about 12 years. <laughs> I mean, it's always the same thing. And so anyways, he's working on the vessel, and he works on it from the, I mean, I'll never forget it. Brother Jack, he's working on it from the outside, and he goes along the top, and he works on the outside, and he throws a little water on it. But, but you know what? This, this part of it's something different. He said, you know, preacher, he said, a lot of people work on the vessel from the outside in. He said, but I work on the vessel from the inside out. See, the Bible says man looks on the outer appearance, but God looks on the heart. I think sometimes we expect folks to come into church and clean up. Listen, as we all say, it's our, it's our job to catch the fish, and then He'll clean the fish. Amen? Listen, let's just catch. And he allows you to go in the fire. But he's not going to need you in the fire. 
discouraged. And uh, Brother Terry, one day, he walked into the sanctuary and his mom was one of the ladies that helped clean the church. And his mom was up in the balcony and she was cleaning the pews and she was taking Murphy's oil soap and cleaning the wood down and things like that. And she looked down and Brother Joel, her husband, or her son was at the altar and he was praying and he was crying out to God. He thought he was by himself and the next thing Sister Patsy, he knew, is his mom had come out of the balcony and she walked down and she put her arm around him and she prayed with the boy. And after that he said, Mom, I'm done. I'm discouraged. I I'm down and out. I'm broken. I, I feel like God's not using me, but I'm just done. And you know what? He lost his song. And he got up. And I know I've told this story before, but pretend like I've never told it before. And uh, he went to his office and he couldn't find a pen. He went to his associate pastor's office and got a pen. And he went to write out the, by the way, trying to type up a note of resignation. The computer wouldn't work. He couldn't find a pen. He went to his associate pastor's office, got a pen, and dried up. He went, to, he went to find a pencil, couldn't find a pencil. And this is what he said. He said, Nathan, I just said, bless God, I'll go to the nursery and I'll get me a crayon and I'll write my resignation out in that crayon. And he got him a red crayon. He said, Nathan, I went to write my resignation out in the crayon broke. He said, I just won't write my resignation. I'll get up in the pulpit on Sunday morning and just tell him I did it. Well, he went back to uh, uh, the sanctuary to tell his mom he's going to go eat and there was a homeless man. Dirty and nasty, filthy. And he said, Preacher, I'm not looking for no money. I'm not looking. He said, I just want something to eat. So, Brother Gene, the preacher took him down to Burger King. Got him a Walker Valley meal and ate there. And then when they got done eating, there was a Kmart behind where they ate. And he said, uh, I want to take you up here to Kmart and I want to get you some new breeches, some new shirt, some shoes. So he went in, bought his new breeches and a shirt, some socks and some shoes, and he put that outfit on, and the, they paid for it, uh, put it on in the restroom. He come out, and he's getting ready to put, I mean, his feet were blistered, and his nails were broken and ingrown, and up my, they were nasty. His feet had calluses and sores, and I mean, just, it looked like calluses days in pain. And uh, uh, God spoke to his heart, Sister Carol. He was driving his wife's car that day, and she had some vast the care lotion on the dashboard and the Lord said I want you to wash his feet with that lotion and so he got out and he put the lotion in his hands for the Lord and he began to put them on that man's feet and rub those feet massage those feet and put socks on his feet and all of a sudden Sister Jackie he got a tap on the shoulder it was a truck driver and he said I've been all across this country I've seen all kinds of things but Brother Bill he said I've just seen the greatest act of kindness that I've ever seen. He said, you must be a Christian. He said, well, I'm a pastor down here at this church. He not only led that poor man to the Lord, he led that, that truck driver to the Lord. And guess what? That discouraged, broken, downhearted preacher, he got a soul back. The birds began to sing. See, Brother Rodney, it was just that it was in the fire for a little bit. But God brought him out at the right time. And then God touched him. God gave him joy. Right now, you may feel like you're in the fire.
might want to do that. I might want to put a picture of a bird. He even had, he didn't even have to carve it. He had, you know, like cookie cutters. And, uh, you know, you can have a Santa Claus cookie cutter. You can have a cross cookie cutter and all that Ninja Turtle cookie cutter. And uh, those aren't the ones we've got in the house. <laughs> I used to have some. But anyways, and he had different stencils. Stencils, that's what I want to talk He said, I could put, but no matter what, he said, I may take this thing to believe and push it harder on this one than I do this one. He said, there's no vessel alive. I said, okay. And he said, before I put on this play, I'll write another wrong. It's not be the 23rd series, but this will be one of one. He said, then this is one of two. This is one of three. It's not one of one or one of 23 and two of uh, two or what? He said, it's one of 23, two of 23, three of 23. He said, every vessel is an individual. Every man. He said, that they're unique and they're special in their own way. He said, but every now and then, you get a chosen vessel. And he said, there's the difference. You can make 50 that look alike with a little difference. He said, I know them all the same. I touch them all the same. I spend almost the same amount of time. He said, Brother Jim, but there's, he said, the chosen vessel, when it comes out of the fire, it shines. He said, I don't even have to paint it. I don't even have to put another coat on. He said, they just shine. And he said, I'll put them in a closet. He took me over to that closet and he pulled the curtain back and he had five that almost looked. And they looked just like these windows. They were this shiny. They had all kinds of different colors. When everything else might be blue or might be, uh, you know, that rust color of pottery, those chosen vessels looked like that. <laughs> and he said, man of God, he said, God said that we were chosen vessels. Say, brother, do you, 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 you say you want to be a better friend and a better brother and a better son and all that. And you say, you don't know if you can be a better sin. You just say the best. So you, you're a chosen best. Hey, sister, at least I shared with you the other day about running down the story. And his church wants to do the hand job. And that, he said he's had a hard time getting that hand times together. But you know what? I don't know anyone else that hand times like you and like our hand times are. You need a chosen vessel. Brother Brady, just get up there and leave. How you need a chosen vessel. Sister Carol, play that organ. How you play that organ. Chosen vessel. Hey, Mason, when you go to school and you sing in the prayer, Message before, but I like it. 
said, I put those in here for you. He said, I've got a large family. When somebody gets found, when somebody gets married, he said, I've got money in the chosen vessel, I'll take it to them. When, some, when somebody's buried in the family, we, he, well, he said, sometimes we're cremated and I put their ashes in the uh, chosen vessel given to the family, to the spouse or something like that. So he showed me the wheel and he showed me the fire. And, but Brother Mike had come to my favorite part. He said, every now and then, you can work on it on the wheel. You can do all you know to do. You can put it in the fire. You can take it out. It can sing. It can hum. And it can have the right tune and the right hook and everything. You can put your name on it. You can put your number on it. He said, every now and then, there's a crack in it. He said, people in Israel called me. He had a shop one time. Brother Terry, do you remember Simon the Tanner in the Word of God? Had a shop right down from where Simon the Tanner had his shop. What, Brother Jack, 2,000 years ago? He said, I'm the master potter. He said, pottery don't get flawed in my hands to people. He said, the pottery gets flawed in my hands. He said, Sister Star, this is about where I had to get out of there because I was afraid I was going to break some pottery. <laughs> I mean, Sister Stephanie, I about had a, Brother Kent, I about had a feet. He said, I don't put it back in the pot. I don't put clay on it. I can't anoint it again. He said, I get ticks. He said, I get ticks that have been removed off the lambs and sheep. He said, they, and I don't know if he meant to say this, little Josh, but he said, there's just something about the blood of the lamb. I said, brother, say that one more time. He said, they don't know what it is, but there's just something about the blood of the lamb. He said, I can take that blood out of that tick. I can squeeze it out and I can take the blood and I can put it in that crack. And he said he heals it. <clears throat> now, listen. This is my favorite part. Even though you're in the hands of the potter, we're not going to get perfect to the to heaven. Right. And he didn't make us flawed, but because of Adam and Eve, we were born flawed. And guess what?
this and God does. He knows your heart. Maybe this morning you say, Preacher, I just feel like I'm in on the wheel and I'm martyr. I feel like I'm in the fire. And I'm wondering where it's going to take me out. And I've lost my soul. Listen, you're about to get back. Maybe you're broken. And you just need a touch. Would you raise your hand and say, Preacher, I'm just broken and I just need a touch. I'm in the fire and I need a touch. Bless your heart. 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 Listen, you see those hands. Listen, I'm going to pray. This is what I love you to do. Does coming to the altar say it? Does it change your love? Listen. Yeah, where you're at, you can talk to the Lord. But I, I'd like for you to come. I'd like for you to come so one of our preachers can pray with you and talk with you and encourage you. I'm telling you, in these last days, we need one another. I mean, I know we've got Jesus, and in all honesty, He's all we need. But, I, I, but we need one another. Oh, and it's good to know that you've got a network of, of, of church families surrounding you, friends surrounding you, and, and, and drenching you in prayer. We need it. Lord, we love you. I pray for I know, I know that you spoke, Lord. I know that you want to be a preacher today. And Lord, I, I, I pray that I've said something that, that would be a help. And Lord, I pray if there's one here today that's lost, I pray that they be the day to get saved. If there's one that needs to rededicate their life, I pray that they come. If there's one that's broken and just needs help, deliverance, and encouragement, I pray that they come. We'll praise you, Lord, for what you do. Jesus. Amen. Give 505. The standards are saying 505. Would you come? We'll pray with you. Brother Jack will meet with you. I'll meet with you. Brother Bill will meet with you. You can get a brother or sister by the hand. Ask him to come pray with you. I know the children. Just come.